Mr. Scrooge. I predict it may become necessary for you to part my service if you continue to find the need to waste my coal. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Sorry, Mr. Scrooge. Where for this clerk donned his stuff and tried to warm himself about the candle. But not being a man of keen imagination, he failed. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Bob Presser. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Ha! Humbug! Christmas a humbug? Uncle, you don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas. What have you got to be merry about? You're poor enough. For what right do you have to be so dismal? You're rich enough. Ha! Humbug! Don't be angry, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas. Out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills? Without any money, you're a year older, not a penny richer. Why, if I could work my will, every idiot went around with Merry Christmas on his lips, would be bald in his own pudding with a sprig of holly to his heart. Uncle. Nephew. <laughs> you keep your Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, but you don't keep it. Then let me leave it alone. Little good it's ever done you, or little good it ever do you. There are many things in which I've derived good by which I've not profited. Christmas among the rest of them. I see Christmas time as a good time where men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely and think of those below them as if they were fellow passengers to the grave. And therefore, Uncle, although it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it! Well said, sir! One more sound out of you, crutching you keep your Christmas by finding somewhere else. Well, wow. you're quite a powerful speaker. I wonder you don't win the parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you in town first. Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because he fell in love. <laughs> be on your way. Nay, Uncle. You never found it a reason to see me before I was married. Why make it a reason now? Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. Ask nothing of you. Why cannot we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry to see you so resolute. But I've made my trial and punished Christmas, and I'll keep on Christmas here until the last. So, Merry Christmas, Uncle. Ba! And a Happy New Year! Humba! <laughs> Stop me, sir. Am I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead these seven years. Oh, actually, Mr. Marley passed away seven years ago this very night. We have no doubt his liberality is well represented. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, we find it more than usually desirable that we make some slight provision for the poor and destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common comforts. Hundreds of thousands in want of common necessaries, sir. All the no prisons? Prisons? <laughs> plenty of prisons, sir, plenty. In the Union, workhouses are still in operation. But of course they are, sir, but I wish I could say that they were not. And the treadmill and the pole are in fine vigor. Both very busy, sir. Oh, I thought from what you said something happened to stop them and their useful chorus. I'm glad to hear it. A few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of war. We choose this time of all others when want is keenly felt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Oh, what shall we put you down for? <laughs> you can put me down for nothing. <laughs> you wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make Merry Christmas myself. Mr. Wally never did. And I cannot afford to help idle people be merry. I support those establishments we've mentioned. They cost enough. And if people are that bad off, let them go there. But, sir, many can't go there. and Many would rather die than go there. Well, if they'd rather die than go there, let them do it. Decrease the surplus population. <coughs> Besides, it's none of my business. But, sir, you can make it your business. It's enough for a man to take care of his own business without messing with someone else's business. My business occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, gentlemen. But, sir, it's only... Good afternoon! <laughs> Zoom 
huge his labors with a much higher opinion of himself, and in a far more facetious temper than was usual, even for him. Meanwhile, outside, the fog and the darkness thickened, so much so that the ancient tower of an old church, whose gruff old bell peered smiling down at Scrooge out of a gothic window in the wall, grew invisible. It struck its hours and quarters in the clouds. Soon, the time of shutting up the counting house had arrived.
Where's your partner? Jacob Marley. Can, can, can you sit down? I can't. Do it, then. You don't believe in me? I do. Why doubt? Why do you doubt your own senses? Because a little thing affects them. A bit of, little bit of indigestion. You might be a bit of undigested beef, a blob of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a bit of underdone potato. There's more of gravy than grave to you, whatever you are. Do you see this toothpick? I do. You're not looking at it, but I see it, notwithstanding. All I have to do is swallow this toothpick and for the rest of my days be hounded by a bevy of goblins. Humbug, I tell you, humbug! Oh! Ho, 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 ho! ho. Wonderful! Have you finished for operation? Why do you come to me? Oh, man of worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do, I must, but why do spirits walk the earth and will why do you trouble me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him Walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. I have doomed to wander the earth and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on this earth and turned to happiness. Oh, Jacob, uh, uh, you're fettered. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it. Think by link and yard by yard. I made it of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Is it pattern strange to you? Or would you know the length and weight of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was as long, as heavy, as these seven Christmas Eves ago, Ebenezer. You have labored on it since. It is a potter's chain. Oh, Jake, speak some comfort to me, I pray. I have done to you. It comes from other regions, Ebenezer, and is conveyed by other ministers to other kinds of men. You, you, you travel fast? On the wings of the wind. You must have covered a great deal of ground in these seven years, then, Jacob. Oh, Captain, bound in double iron, not to know, not to know that no space of regret can make amends for one's life's opportunities misused. Yet, such was I. Oh, such was I! But, but, but you were always such a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Uh, mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Mercy, charity, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a small drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. And at this time of the rolling year, I suffered most! Hear me! My time is nearly gone. Oh, oh, I will, Jacob, but don't be hard on me. Don't be flowery, I pray. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate, Ebenezer. A chance and hope of procurement. You were always such a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the hope and the chance that you mentioned? <laughs> it is. I uh, think I'd rather not. <laughs> Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow night when the bell tolls one. <laughs> well, could, could not get them all at once and get it over with? Expect the second upon the next night at the same hour. Expect the third upon the next night when the chimes of twelve cease to vibrate. Look to see me no more, but look for your own sake to remember what has passed between us.
o'clock. I can't be, it was after two when I went to bed. One o'clock. How the clock is wrong. Must have gotten an icicle in the works. I can't have slept all the way through another day and into the next night. It isn't possible that something's happened to the sun. Oh, check it, Molly. Oh, it was all a dream. Was it a dream or not? I think it's all a bunch of hooey. <laughs> oh, oh, are you the spirit who was foretold me? I am. Oh, who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Oh, spirit, the, the light, can you not put your cap upon it? What? Would you so put out with worldly hands the light I give? Well, well I don't mean to offend, spirit, but, but what business do you have with me? Your welfare. Well, I would think it would be more conducive to my welfare to have a good night's sleep. Your reclamation, then. Take heed. Arise and walk with me. But but I am a mortal and liable to fall. Bear with the touch of my arm and you will be upheld. Oh, I, I know this place. I, I was born here. I was a boy here. Do you remember the way? Oh, yes, I could walk it blindfolded. Strange to have forgotten it all these years. Oh. Look, my friends, Wells and Tompkins, Masses and Hathaway, Yo Hathaway, Yo Hat. These are the shadows of things which once were. They have no reflection of us, though they do seem rather jovial. Oh, jovial, yes, they're off on, on Christmas holiday. Manus, Merry Christmas, Manus, Merry. Oh, the school is not quite deserted. I see a solitary child. Neglected by his friends. Yet still. Oh, yes, poor boy. My, my own forgotten self. Oh, look, I'm reading Alibaba. Oh, dear old honest Alibaba. Why? When this poor boy was left alone in the school, the books became his friends. Valentine, his brother Austin, Robinson Crusoe. Oh, I remember them all so very well. I just wish that. But it's late, much too late. What is the matter? Oh, nothing, Spirit. Oh, there was a young boy singing Christmas carols at my door this night. I, I should like to have given him something, that's all. Let us look upon another Christmas. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, my dear, dear brother. Dad? I've come to bring you home, dear brother, to bring you home. Home, little fat? Yes, home, for good and all, forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home is like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one day night that I was not afraid to ask him once again if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should, and sent me in a coach to bring you. You are to become a man and go into business and are never to come back here. But first we're to be together all Christmas long and have the merriest time in the world. You are quite a woman, little fat. Come, come, Ebenezer, we must get your trunk and your things. The coach is waiting. Come, Ebenezer, come. She was always a delicate creature, one who the slightest breath might have withered. Yet she had a large given heart. Oh, tis true, Spirit, I'll not gainsay it. She died, I believe, as a woman and had children. Yes, one, one child. Yes, your nephew, Fred. Yes, Fred. <laughs> Oh, it's Fezziwig, dear old Fezziwig, bless my soul, Fezziwig alive again. And there's Richard Wilkins. Richard Wilkins and I were very close, you know. Dear Richard, poor Richard. Yo ho, my boys. No more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve, Richard. Christmas, Ebenezer. Now, up with the shutters before you can say Bob your uncle. Ebenezer, 
Fletcher, Ebenezer. I am most disappointed in you two. You did not have near enough fun this evening. But, sir. Tut tut, not another one. But, to ensure you'll have sufficient fun tomorrow, you must take this. Thank you, sir. Now, off with you two. Good night and Merry Christmas. Thank you, sir. Merry Good Christmas. Night. Merry Christmas. What a night. What a cold roast. The pies. And the beer! There's not a man in all London as good as old Fezziwig! In all England! I dare say the whole world! Fezziwig has given them but a few pounds of your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. Is this so much to deserve that praise? Oh no, Spirit, it's not that. It, it's that he has the power to render our service light or burdensome, toil or pleasure. Say that. His power lies in things, words, and deeds so slight and insignificant as to make it impossible to add and total them all up. What then? Why, the happiness he brings is great as if it cost a small fortune. What is the matter? Oh, nothing particular. Something I think? Oh, um, I, I should just like to say a word or two to my clerk Bob Crutchet just now. That's all. My time grows short. Come. It matters little, Ebenezer. Another idol has displaced me. Belle, what idol has displaced you? The golden one. This is the even-handed dealings of the world. There is nothing on it so hard as poverty. You fear the world too much. All the other hopes have merged in the hope of being beyond its reproach. I have seen your noble aspirations fall one by one until the master passion gain and grows <laughs> What then? Even when I have grown so much wiser? What then? I am not changed towards you. Am I? Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so. You were changed. When it was made, you were another man. I was a boy. Your feelings tell you that you were not what you are now. I am. That which promise happiness when we are one in heart is fraught with misery now that we are two. How often and keenly I have thought of it, I will not say. It is enough that I have thought of it and can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words? No, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, another atmosphere of life. Hope as its great end. Anything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. Far promise had never been between us. Tell me, did you seek me out and try to win me now? Do you think not? I would gladly think otherwise if I could. Heavens knows! When I've learned a truth like this, I know how strong and irresistible it must be. But if you were free today, tomorrow, yesterday, can even I believe you would choose a dowerless girl? You, who, with your very confidence with her, weigh everything by gain. Or, if choosing her, if for a moment you are forced enough from your one guiding principle to do so, do I not know that your regret and repentance would surely follow? I do, and I release you with the full heart of the love of whom you once were. You may have pain in this, a very, very brief time. But you will dismiss the recollection of it gladly as an uncomfortable dream from which you love me awoke. Be your happiness in the life you have chosen. Bell? Bell! Bell! Go after her, you fool! Oh, oh spirit! Spirit! Why, why do you lie in torturing me? Show me no more! Conduct me home! One shadow more. No, spirit, no! I don't wish to see it! I Bill. And her family. Oh. oh, such a graceful child. So full of promise. Why, to think she could have been my child. A springtime in the haggard winter of my life. Bill, my darling. My dear. Hello, Papa. Go now. I'll take your brother to bed. Yes, Papa. <laughs> Belle, I saw an old friend of yours.
Beers this afternoon. Who was it? Guess. Guess? How can I? Um, Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Scrooge, it was. I passed his office window and it was not shut up. He had a candle inside. I could scarcely help but see him. His partner, he, he lies upon the point of death, I hear. And there he sat, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. All alone in the world, my dear old Ebenezer. Oh, spirit! Spirit! Conduct me home! Show, show me no more! I, I cannot bear it! Oh, no. Ebenezer Scrooge, I come for your reclamation. Would you put off your worldly hands the light I give?
never mind. As long as you come here, have a sit by the fire and have a wool. Oh, Lord bless you. <laughs> no, no, there's Father coming. Hi, Martha. Hi. Hi, Martha. Christmas Eve. Oh, Father. <laughs> Merry Hi, Christmas. Martha. Hello, Martha. Merry Christmas to you. All right, children, it's time to wash up. Martha, help Tim. Yeah, I don't need help, Martha. <laughs> How was he in church today? As good as gold and better. You know, he can stop posting by himself so much. He told me coming home, he hoped all the people in the church saw him, saw that he was a cripple. <clears throat> then it would be pleasant for them on Christmas to remember who it was who made the lame beggars to walk and the blind to see it. Oh, Peter, get the door, that'll be the baker with the goose. So bustle ensued, you'd have thought that goose to be the rarest of all birds. And there never was such a goose. Why like Bob Cratchit said, there was never such a goose cooked. Its size, its flavor, its tenderness, its cheapness were all themes of universal admiration. Eat out by like applesauce and potatoes, it was a fine and sufficient meal for the entire family. Thankful for this Christmas day and for its meaning. Let us be grateful for the food we are about to partake and for its nourishment. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Their plates were filled and their bellies the same with what little food they had. Then Mrs. Cratchit rose to go out and take up the Christmas pudding. Suppose it should not be done enough. Suppose it should break and turning out. smiling proudly with that Christmas pudding, like a speckled cannonball topped with a sprig of Christmas holly. And what a pudding it was, while everyone had something wonderful to say about it. No one said or thought that it was a small pudding for such a large family. At last the dinner was done, and Bob Cratchit pulled out the hot punch from the jug, while chestnuts on the fire rusted and sputtered noisily. The toast. A Merry Christmas to us all. God bless us. Merry Christmas. Oh, Spirit, tell me, will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat in this poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these events remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Oh, no, Spirit. Please tell me that he'll be spared. If these events remain unaltered by the future, None of my kind shall find him here. What then? If he'd be like to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Man, if man you be in heart, well, bear that wicked can't until you've discovered what the surplus is and where it is. We decide what man shall live, what man shall die. It may be in the sight of heaven that you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Mr. Scrooge, I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of our feast. The founder of our feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. I'd hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, please, tis Christmas Day. It is Christmas Day, I am sure. To one which toasts the health of such an odious, stingy, cold, hard, unforgiving, feeling man as he? You know he is, Robert. You of all people know better. My dear, please. I will toast to his health for your sake and the days, not for his. Long life to him. Very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
I'm sure he'll be very, very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. <laughs>
I said, is it a bear? You were obliged to answer yes! <laughs> well, he's given us plenty of merriment. He'd be ungrateful not to drink to himself. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge. May you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Won't take it from me, but may you have it nonetheless. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge. Come, Scrooge. We must go. Oh, spirit, oh, you're becoming all gray and wrinkled. All spirits' lives so short. My life upon this globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight at midnight. The time is near. Oh, spirit, there's something strange at the base of your robe. Look, man, what do you see? Oh, I see two children. A boy and a girl, wretched, frightful little souls. Spirit, are they yours? They are men. The boy is ignorant. The girl is born. Beware of them both, but most of all, beware this boy. For on his brow I see written that which is doomed, unless this writing be erased. Deny, slander them that tell the yea, and buy the end. Have they no refuge, no recall? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? No, spirit, no! The polar and the treadmill are in full vigor. <laughs> no, no, spirit, no! Spirit of the future, you're about to show me shadows of things that not yet happened, but will happen in the future. Is that not so? Oh, ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I've yet seen, but as I know your purpose is to do me good, and and I hope not to be the man that I was. I'm, I'm prepared to bear your company and do it with a grateful heart. Will you not speak to me? Oh, lead on, spirit, lead on. The night is waning fast and the time is precious to me, I know. So lead on, spirit, lead on. <laughs> no, I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Well, last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> Heaven knows. <laughs> what do you suppose he's done with his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. All I know is he hasn't left it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's bound to be a very cheap funeral for the life of me. I can't think of anybody to go with it. Suppose we uh, make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if lunch is provided, but <laughs> I must be fed. Well, I have lost my interest among you. After all, I never eat lunch, but I suppose I'll volunteer to go. Anybody else will? Well, let's off then. <laughs> Spirit, I know these men, all of them. But I don't see myself at my usual place at the exchange. Joe. Alright, let's have a look here. Alright, we've got some towels. 
towels, some sheets, some shirts. And those fine linen they use. Indeed. <laughs> yes, they are. And I have these. Silver. Yes. Silver teaspoons. Yes. And silver sugar tongs. Very nice. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> well, let's see then. Always gives too much to the ladies. It's going to be the ruin of me. There you are, love. Hey. What? One more word and I'll repent of being so liberal and I'm not going half crown no. Oh. Oh. Here, here, Joe. Here's my bundle then. All right. Let's have a look. What's this? Bed curtains. Bed curtains? I don't mean to say you took these down rings and all with, with him lying there. Oh, yes, I did. And why not? <laughs> Well, I dare say, Missy, you were born to make your fortune, and you'll certainly do. Yes. yes. Well, now, now, mind them there blankets there. Blankets? Yes. His blankets? Well, who else? He's not about to take cold without them now, is he? <laughs> now, you, you don't think he, he, he died of anything catching you? Oh, no, never you mind. I wasn't so fond of him as I'd hang about for the likes of this if he had. Now, settle up, Joe. What's my account? Well, it's a fine account, my dear. A fine account indeed. There you are. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's it then, isn't it? He frightened us all off while he was alive. Only to profit from him now that he's dead. The old Scrooge. Such an old child. unhappy man might very well be my own. My, my life tends that way now. Merciful heavens, is there no one in the town that feels emotion caused by this man's death? Show me that person, I beseech you. What's the news? Is it good or bad? Very bad. No, are we quite ruined? No, th there's hope yet, Caroline. If he relents, there is. Nothing has passed hope of such a miracle as that. He's past relenting. He's dead. Dead, you say? To whom will our death be transferred? I, I don't know, but before that time we shall be ready with the money. And even if we weren't ready with the money, it'd be bad fortune indeed to find so merciless a creditor. We may sleep with light hearts tonight. Come, let us check into the matter. Oh, oh, spirit, spirit, show me some tenderness connected with death or that, that dark shadow that we just left will haunt me forever. And he took the child and sat him in the midst of them. Mother, what is it? Tis nothing, dear. It's his close work. It hurts my eyes. Tis better now. They grow weak by candlelight, and I won't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home from the world, which must be near his time. Past it, rather. I think he's walked a little slower than he used to these last few evenings, Mother. I've known him. I've known him to walk with Tiny Tim very fast indeed. And so have I. And so have I. Oh, but he was very light to carry. And your father loved him so. It was no trouble, no trouble at all. Well, there's your father at the door. Yes, my dear. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it was. But you'll see it often. I promised Tim we would walk there on a Sunday. I love the child. I'm sorry, dear. I saw Mr. Scrooge's nephew today. Such a pleasant gentleman. He could tell I was a little down and inquired about what distressed me, on which I told him. He said, I'm heartily sorry for it, Mr. Cratchit. After that, he gave me his card and said, This is where I live. Pray, come see me. Now, it wasn't for the sake of what he might be able to do for us, but for his pleasant way. He is quite delightful. I'm sure he has a good soul. 
You'd be sure of him, my dear, if you saw and spoke with him. And truth be told, I shouldn't be at all surprised if he could find Peter in a better situation. Do you hear that, Peter? And then Peter will be keeping company with someone and setting out for himself. Oh, get along with you, Ellen. It's just as likely as not one of these days that however and whenever we part from one another, I am sure we shall none of us ever forget our tiny Tim, shall we? Never, Father. And I know, my dears, that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, though he was a little, little child, we shall not quarrel easily one with another and forget our tiny Tim in doing it. Never, Father. No, never, Father. I'm so happy. So very happy. Spirit, oh, I sense that our parting is at hand. I, I know it, but I, I know not how. Tell me about the men they spoke about at Old Joe's. Oh, oh, Spirit, before I draw near at that stone at which you point, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or are these the shadows of things that might be only? Men's courses foreshadow certain ends, and persevered in they must lead. But if those courses are the ends will be altered as well. Say it as much as what you show me. Say it, I pray.
golden sunlight, heavenly sky, merry bells, glorious, glorious. Uh, oh, boy, boy. Sir? Yes, boy, what day is it? Day is it? Yes, what day is it today? Today? Why, Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Well, haven't missed it after all. The spirits have done it all in one night. Oh, they can do anything. Of course they can. Oh, boy, boy. What a marvelous young man. Do you know that poultry shop at the corner on the next street? I should do if I do. What an intelligent lad. It's a joy to talk to him. <laughs> do you know... Is the prize turkey still hanging there? Not the little one, but the really big one? What? The one as big as me? Yes, Webber. The tank in there now. Oh, would you go and buy it for me? Oh, God. Oh, I'm in earnest. Go and buy it for me. Bring the man back here that I might tell him how to deliver it. Bring him back and I'll give you a shilling. If you're back in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. Look at him run. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. They shan't know who sent it. Why, it's twice the size of Tiny Tim!
shall not be repeated. I shall not stand for this any longer. Therefore, therefore, I'm going to raise your salary, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> I shall buy another cold scout before you can start another buy. <laughs> yes, of course, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> oh, won't you please sit down? Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> May I take your hat, sir? Thank you. Christmas to you and yours, Bob Cratchit, but especially Merry Christmas to you, Tiny Tim. Merry Christmas to you, sir, and God bless us, Merry Christmas.